And welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the monastery, the open bar of the internet, the world's greatest shit show, and the place where we, the good brothers and sisters of this most holy of temples, seek enlightenment through the drunkest, craziest, and most batshit ways possible. I am your one and only gaming monk, better known as Mildra, and with me I have two newcomers from the temp to the temple. Part of the multi-headed monster that is Aces Games and creators of the upcoming VHS, Very Horror Stories. In the red corner, we, ha we have the man, who, the man who probably has more, more death counters than anybody else in Dead by Daylight. <laughs> the, the ace of spades himself, Simone M Morini. And Hi, everyone. In, and in the blue corner, we, ha we have the man who does not have time to bleed, Mattia Ventura. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Hello, hey, everyone. How you doing today, man? Yeah, yeah, we're, we're good. Fine, fine. Well, evening in your case, afternoon in my case. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Damn, time zones. So, I'd like to start out with the humble beginnings before we get into VHS proper. Um, walk me through your first introduction, respectively, to role-playing games and what made it stick. Okay, so I um, the Aces game was born in uh, 2019, but um, in 2012 I wrote my first uh, role-playing game that was uh, Nameless Land, a post-apocalyptic uh, role-playing game, and uh, then I wrote uh, another two role-play game, uh, Unglorious, the necro fantasy role-playing game, and Evie Sugar, uh, Tesla Punk, and uh, this is my first our first project uh, that will be translated also in English so for us it's the first time and um, and for me is my first interview in English so uh, sorry to you Mildred sorry for, sorry for everyone who are going to hear me and uh, that's it is my job now I only write uh, and play and uh, it looked uh, very awesome, very very funny, but it also very 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 tiring, tired, and uh, it's difficult. But yeah, mm -hmm. we are here <laughs> now. Uh, what, uh, Matt, Mattia? What about you? How did what? Yeah, your... well, <laughs> well, for me, yeah. Well, I started playing RPGs like oh, oh god, uh, basically. 20 years ago dang i'm i'm, I'm old and uh, you know there were these friends that were you know talking about this thing and you know you throw these funny ship the things on the on the table and you pretend that there's like monsters and dragons and i was like hey cool and uh, let, let me try that and so i've been hooked uh, ever since and after a long pause i started playing again uh, a couple of years ago and uh, i first uh, knew of Aces Games through uh, Unglorious. A little bit before the Kickstarter campaign, I stumbled upon uh, uh, Unglorious, and I was I, I really liked it. And uh, through uh, a series of connections, I ended up, uh, uh, you know, uh, collaborating uh, every once in a while with uh, with Simone with the, the promotion uh, for his games. So I uh, I ran uh, some some games, uh, some sessions of his games on uh, Aces Games uh, Discord server, and I'm partici I will be participating to the uh, production of a little bit of the of the material for the upcoming uh, VHS. Mm -hmm. uh, now to further to further go into to that, what was your? Fr I can I can see that is I can see that that's your guys's introduction as a des from a design end of things. But what also was your introduction to role playing games, just from a playing or DMing um, perspective? I'm oh god, I was twelve years old the first time I'm approaching um, to a role play game. It was uh, D and D three point five mm -hmm. as as a player, as a monk, uh, a useless uh, <laughs> useless my monk. Symp my sympathies, and I and I like playing monks. <laughs> yeah, I'm a bad player. Uh, I, I was uh, a bad player, so my monk is pretty and useless. Uh, but he's really, really fun for me. And the first time I threw a d um, d20, uh, it was 
very very uh, emotional and um, then I go through some other game like Vampires, uh, Cyberpunk, uh, mm -hmm. and uh, D &D, and uh, D &D, D &D, D &D. <laughs> and uh, after uh, ten years of Dungeons and Dragons, uh, I get uh, tired, and so I decide to road you know, <laughs> role play games. Mm -hmm. Now, yeah, for me too. Uh, I started with. Dungeons and Dragons and basically a little bit of maybe World of Darkness and for the longest time I've only played this you know before the the internet was so prominent and I I really didn't know about the existence of other games it was like about I think three years ago that you know I discovered the whole universe of hundreds of available games and uh, I started, uh, I was a player for the longest time, mainly because I, I didn't think that, was, that it would be a good, uh, you know, a good game master. And I started uh, GMing about, uh, again, a couple of years ago. And some, somehow, for some reason, people say that, that I'm good at it. So <laughs> I'm keep, uh, I keep doing it. Mm -hmm. Now, with that in mind, where... What start, what would what was the appeal for you guys since VHS is ostensibly a tribute to a lot of horror at, in general and slasher style horror in particular um what provided the what's part what provided the inspiration to take that to take that approach for this foray uh Mattia go <laughs> yeah so go. Basically, yeah, I think that uh, you know the, the question is what what was the the, the reason uh, of taking that uh, that the, the the thing you know the horror movies uh, of the particular era from the seventies to to the nineties and a little bit of the modern ones as an inspiration to make this kind of game. So basically, that's the that's the question. So you, you want to take this, uh, Simone? Uh, oh yeah, I'm. Uh... I was uh, attracted by anything that um, I watch, I play when I was a child, and so even if when uh, when I watch the horror movie like Nightmare on Elm Street, uh, Friday the Thirteenth, Halloween, I don't um, I don't sleep at night. Uh, when I grew up, I decided to return to my. Um, 10 years old age and so I, I want to return at my um, at my memories and I would like to um, uh, what can I say I would like to uh, maybe I think to to, to make uh, other people experience the same things right yeah 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 thank you so much Matthew. after all after all yeah that, that's what role playing are about you know it's uh, not just the narration, but it's the the emotion as a game, as masters and uh, as authors, we want to provide certain kind of uh, experiences and emotions. Again, we are dealing with uh, emotions here, as one of my teachers has said. Because yes, I studied how to be a game master actually, <laughs> and uh, so uh, the game we choose uh, it's already a, a sign of uh, what we want to what kind of experience we, we want to transmit, especially uh, with a game like VHS, which has, again, we takes a very uh, clear uh, statement on what kind of experience uh, it wants to make people feel. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, one thing, that, one thing that I did, one thing that I was a bit curious about with VHS is the the aesthetic, the aesthetic of ha of having these box sets <laughs> in um in in essentially v essentially VHS slipcases, um, <laughs> would it be fair for me to say that you guys were, you guys at some at some point in time were the type type of people who would spend a lot of time in video rental stores? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oops, yeah, guilty was... guilty as charged. <laughs> Yeah, I um, I know how to spot one of my own when I see it. <laughs> I'll, put, <laughs> I'll put it like that. But with the early with the early days of v, with the early days of VHS, did it start? 
what did it did it start out as just some, as just something you guys had been kicking around? How how did it come to that? Oh, uh, see, my last games were all uh, um, classic manuals, uh, so classic rule book. Uh, the manual of adventures uh, so i decided to try someone else uh, something else and uh, my inspiration uh, um, for the boxes uh, was came over after i watched uh, 31 uh, rob zombie movie from 2020 maybe 2011 i don't remember and that movie transmitted me some kind of uh, vintage uh, um, emotions and so I, I was thinking, would we like to to create a game where the player running from these monsters, like in the nineties, in the eighties, in the seventies, and uh, how can I um, can I transmit these uh, feelings to the player? Well, it's uh, pretty. Um, how can I say? Uh, it's pretty easy to think uh, that all. Uh, would come from the box, so I I don't want to explain uh, I don't want to explain in too much words uh, how the game works, but I want uh, and I want you to see from the box. So when you when you look at the box, uh, I don't say anything, and you think, oh, it's that movie, it's that kind uh, of horror movies, and uh, I hope we can we succeed in that. Mm -hmm. Now, speaking of, speaking of that. With the, with the, th you guys are doing three boxes yeah. for this. Um, Bloodlust, Overplague, and Unchained. Yeah. And each of, each of them having a associated monster and an associated set of PCs. Yeah. Now, <clears throat> something I'm curious about is what is, um, even though the, with this be this being an RPG and all, if you if you guys are if um within the core rules you you're going to be having some support for cut for custom character creation on its own, or if it's yeah. going to rely on the um, pre gens. Yeah. Well, the the pre gens are there, you know, for uh, um, you know as a set of. Uh... Maybe guidelines. Of course, there's there's gonna be you know rules for custom making both monsters, mm -hmm. characters, and uh, also uh, sheets. So writing your own sessions, making your your own maps for GMs and uh, and players. Uh, the the pre generated monsters, uh, sheets, and characters are there. You know as a set of guidelines. Or maybe you you know you want to just uh, you know you have a couple of hours free and you want to just run a quick game and you don't want to make uh, new characters or you don't have you don't have the time, so you just have a set of uh, uh, pre-made, already made, uh, both monsters and characters and stories. Mm -hmm. But yeah, you you can totally make your uh, your own uh, custom everything from the monsters to the to the characters to the to the story. Yeah, that was something I want. That was something that was in the back of my mind when I was going through the quick start, whether about uh, <laughs> whether or not this was going to be one of those pre one of those pre-made heavy approach heavy approaches a la powered by the apocalypse in some regards um but it doesn't seem like that's going to that's going to be the case oh it, let's say it can be if you want it to be but you can totally make uh, your own stuff absolutely yeah now with the, with that in mind i do think it was an interesting approach for you guys to go with a roll under 2d6 um for your for your core mechanic um, what made you guys arrive at that as well as well as the um, different tension levels that you ha that you have? I'm I'm not sure to understand the question. Can you repeat, please? Um, <laughs> <laughs> sorry. Um, the set that what me what was the reason you guys went with a roll under 2d6 system for your for your um, core mechanic for tests okay uh, so basically i love uh, d6 because uh, it's also a vintage dice mm -hmm. uh, and for a vintage game i i want to use <laughs> vintage dice and uh, so uh, the roll under uh, 
uh, mechanics. Uh, it's easy to understand uh, and uh, is not required that the players uh, make math uh, when throw the dice. So you have um, you have uh, um, a number and you roll under that. So easy to easy to remind, easy to approach, even for uh, even for the less skilled uh, players. Mm -hmm. And with that, with that, in, with that in mind, you've you've styled you've styled a lot of the of the rule set for VHS as, as if the players and director are going are going through a film. Yeah, and obviously some of that is with is with things like rewind and fa and fast forward, but. Within the adventures, do you also ha do you also try and have a act structure in place? Mattia, go please. So, uh, yeah, I mean the 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 thing is that uh, uh, you can see you you say you were talking about ten detention levels before, and those are used to determine the if some uh, uh, events happen or not you know maybe it could be the appar the uh, apparition of the monster itself or, or um, other uh, scary events and this again can be determined a little bit uh, randomly but then there is of course uh, a superseding uh, uh, let's say a, a, a structure to the story so we can say that the, the, the larger story can you, again it's set by the director just like a, just like a gm would write uh, uh, a, a session for any other game, you know, you got your PCs, mm -hmm. your NPCs, uh, your the monster, and each and every one of these have their own, you know, their motivation, their characters, and there is a little bit of a story. Uh, but then during the game, you have this uh, randomization, a little bit of randomization in the single, uh, you know, the the detention the events, and this, you know, is a way to keep the the, the you keep the, the the action going and to keep a little bit of uh, an element of surprise. Uh, uh, you could say both for the characters and for the director, because uh, as a director, if you if you stick to the to the dice rolls, uh, again you're gonna you're gonna know where the story as a larger goes. But then uh, with the single events, uh, you can be a little bit again a little bit surprised because. Uh, uh, you, you could say, okay, now the monster's going. I didn't plan that, but let's go. Mm -hmm. So it's a way to, uh, again, it's a balance between having a set story and uh, a little bit of a, uh, again, a, a random uh, element. Mm -hmm. And with that, with that in mind, while the th while the three that while the three that you have are are meant to represent different subgenres. I believe I believe it would be safe for me to say that even if even if you're using that same map, that there's going to be guidance to do different angles to make sure to make sure that sessions um, don't always feel the same. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because yeah, it's um, uh, uh, it'll become with a trait with a monster's trait. So. Um, every manual in uh, in the box will have different traits, uh, um, which uh, you can create your monster. And so this trait determine how to he uh, approach the main set. So in the bloodlust uh, box, uh, you can build uh, the monster who chases the monster who chasing you with the chainsaw, and uh, who is always behind the corner, who is grabbing you when you try to hide, and with overplug. Uh, we try to make some uh, movie feels uh, like uh, alien, uh, sorry, alien, uh, mm, alien-like movies, and uh, and also traits to use a monster like the thing uh, of John Carpenter's. And for Unchained, uh, you can play demons, you can play um, abomination from other dimensions, uh, uh, ghosts. Uh, so in base of which uh, traits a monster have uh, change uh, his approach with the main set and also the approach with the with the victims or the survivors yeah yeah of course mm -hmm. now with that with that kind of thing with that kind of thing in mind the way if i've got this right 
just as there's going to be means of customizing characters, there's going to be means of customizing the monster in each of, in each of the s sets. Yeah, 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 absolutely. You can make your 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 own monster and your own characters both from you know from scratch. Maybe even taking an inspiration from uh, another, you know, some movies that you do, that you love, or you know, just really making your own. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. We have published uh, the sheet uh, of Fred Krueger uh, from um, of Predator and uh, Pinhead. So yeah, just the, the, to um, um, just to be sure that uh, the player can see how you can build uh, a monster. Obviously, uh, we don't put these rules in the quick start, but it will be in the final version. Yeah, yeah. The, those are, are like examples of how we can take, uh, you know, uh, a movie that you love. You know, like you can take the monster of that movie, and using the the, the rules that will be in the manual, you can uh, you can uh, make it as a character in the in, in the game and, and play it as a, as a director. Now, with the, with that in with that in mind, oh, something something else that I that I was curious about is if is within the th within the three sets again bloodlust or plague and unchained. If you if there are um, if there are certain rules or cer or certain ad certain advice given to emphasize that particular subgenre. Oh yeah, sure. Uh, in every manual, there will be um, a, not only a background of the the areas and the main sets, but also advices to play some kind of um, uh, of movie that represent uh, the book it, itself. Mm -hmm. uh, so there was there will be plenty of uh, suggestion, plenty of uh, background para uh, paragraphers. And um, because we want to make sure that uh, uh, not only to uh, uh, try to make understand the um, uh, the setting, but also try to um, uh, try to uh, sorry, uh, um, just a moment. <laughs> No rush, take your time. <laughs> uh, we want to make sure that everyone is able to create uh, a session, even if uh, he don't, uh, he don't, he don't see the movies, mm -hmm. right? And so we hope to, we hope to make. It. Oh, you basically, yeah. I think that Simone is trying to say that you, if you, uh, there's gonna be guidelines and uh, uh, suggestions and advices, so you don't really, you can if you want, but you don't have to, you know, watch like 30 movies before you can, you, you feel ready to to run a game of your chess. Mm -hmm. And as I, as I, since we, since we mentioned, since we mentioned customization. I'd like I'd like you to walk me through a bit of how, a bit of how um, more traditional character creation would work within VHS. Matia, please. Yeah, of course. So basically, uh, uh, the if, if you when you're gonna look at a car, the VHS character sheet, uh, it's pretty self-explanatory. You got your uh, parameters, which are you know you, had, you like you could say your stats. So you got your strength, uh, agility, mind, and charisma, uh, which is again the stats that you use to determine the the result of the dice rolls. And you're gonna have a certain uh, amount of points that you can spend uh, uh, there, and that you can again trade a little bit to get. Uh, uh, you, you then have your uh, your wounds, which basically it's your HP and your insanity, which determines again. Talking about horrors, you you cannot expect you know to. Uh, survive this kind of experience without, you know, having your mind a little bit twisted. So we, you have your also insanity points. Mm. Uh, so you determine those, and then you you have uh, your traits and special ability. So traits are kind of again like little uh, special uh, abilities that you can use. You can choose between. Uh, there are uh, 
those are going to be uh, in the man present in the manual mm -hmm. and uh, every setting uh, uh, is going to have their own uh, peculiar traits and of course you can you can uh, it, it, if it's coherent with the story uh, you can totally you know swap some traits between one setting and another mm. and also the special ability which again instead it's a little bit uh, different because uh, it is determined by the player at character creation so it's going to be uh, completely unique mm -hmm. and uh, it, it, so it's a little bit of a, again a halfway of a mechanical approach and a narrative approach because you have your mechanical your numbers so you mm -hmm. crunchy numbers and then uh, the special ability is going to be a little bit more uh, of an ample uh, breathing uh, a scope. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, there's going to be guidelines to determine a special ability because, you, you know, you can't have a special ability that you can say, you know, I, I use it and I win the game. So, no. Okay. Um, and uh, so that's, that's basically it. Then you're going to choose your character name and you, the actor. So to emphasize the, the movie-like feeling of the game... Uh, you're gonna have your actor name and then your character name, just to you know a little bit of a of a wink to this uh, uh, again to this uh, movie-like feeling of the game, um, and it's gonna be pretty much the same uh, approach to creating a monster. A monster also has a, a character sheet where you have your stats, your traits, your special ability. Of course, uh, needless to say, the monster is much much more powerful than than the players mm -hmm. and i'm guessing that i'm guessing that with the way you have the monsters set up um even if the even if the players manage to get manage to get the upper hand on it it's a temporary thing oh yeah yeah well uh first of all yeah it's very hard to to get uh, the upper hand on the monster uh, of course, you know, think about even just mm, when you take a completely, uh, let's say, natural and physical monster like, you know, your Jason Voorhees or your Leatherface. Uh, they, in theory, they are human, but they are, again, they are much more resilient and strong than a, uh, than a per normal person. So uh, any kind of direct confrontation with the monster is going to end bad for the players if they, you know, if they don't strategize. Uh, you know, a, a monster can very easily dispatch uh, a, a player with, uh, you know, a couple of hits, maybe three, if he's feeling lazy, you know. So there's not going to be long, drawn-out fights uh, where, you know, you, you, you can actually bring down the monster like this. No, it's not going to work like that. And, uh, and that's just for the monster that would be, again, completely normal, let's say, you know, those, those that you can just try and you know blast to kingdom come mm. uh then you have you of course your supernatural monsters again uh you for example let's say let's take a classic you know your classic werewolf uh you cannot just try and shoot your way out of a fight with a werewolf you you need a specific item to kill to kill it so that's gonna be the case with supernatural beings you can kill them only if you had the right uh, item be it a weapon or a magic item or what have you Mm -hmm. um, it's gonna be even harder for you know entities, you know your your demons and things like that, because uh, basically you cannot kill those guys unless you find again you find a specific ritual, be it uh, again a magic spell or a book or something that you use to make it uh, vulnerable to be dispatched. If you don't do that, you're you're toast, like a hundred percent. Now. Something that I was a bit curious about looking at the way this is designed is would it be fair of me to say that this that this is a game that lends itself primarily to what to um one shots and and self contained affairs rather than length rather than lengthier campaigns? Go ahead, Matthias. Yeah. Please. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's definitely made for, for shorter, uh, either one-shots or very, very short adventures, like uh, two, maybe, maybe three sessions if you, if you want to take it, you know, take it easy. But the thing is, uh, VHS is a, is a game that's all about uh, keeping, the, keeping the tension, keeping the tension high. And that's not something that you can do on the long run, you know, without being uh, either becoming boring 
and repetitive or you know become becoming too 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 stressful if you want it's very it's very hard to to keep uh, to keep the 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 attention of the player and the tension of the player high uh, it, it it is already difficult to do it for an entire session but for a single session so if you are if you do more than one session it, it becomes even harder so yeah it is definitely a game that lends itself to uh, either one shots if you know if you want to get right into into the action you can skip the introduction and do a one shot when you play directly on the map with the monster and what have you mm-hmm. or if you maybe if you want again to make uh, to have a, a bigger introduction part where you have to build the tension you know like in some horror movies that for the first yeah i don't know 20 to 30 minutes looks like everything everything's normal and then everything just goes to shit mm-hmm. so you can Maybe do a first session, uh, you know, completely with a, a theater of the mind technique where you uh, present the, the cast, you know, put them in a certain situation and you have a little bit of interactions with NPCs. Then again, that's the moment where everything goes to hell and you, you take the, the second session and you play VHS the game proper, you know, with your map, your monsters and what have you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I would like to add that there's nothing stopping you from creating sequels, like, uh, like, uh, <laughs> yeah, yes, yeah. like a series of film, like uh, Evil Dead, Evil Dead Two, and Army of Darkness, just to say one. Which, of course, bringing it, bringing Army of Darkness into into the mix, provide is an interesting thing to bring up, given given the vastly different tone between between Evil Dead Two and, well, actually, with all three. All three Evil Deads. The first one yeah. being very, very straightforward with horror. The second one is where we start to get um, the f- the first tastings of the ridiculousness. And yeah. <laughs> by the time Army of Darkness comes along, we've gone full into um, the ridiculous end of w- of what Raimi can do. And because I because th- I think a, I think a lot of people might might look at the idea of doing these sort of horrors and 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 that and the idea that the only the only primary way to play is the is the survive the monster thing but you have you have the fights that are that are present in army of darkness or even predator for that matter um is that is that some is that it something that your rule set is going to support i.e. if some if some people want to do a more combative approach instead of the instead of the runaway. Oh yeah, all depends um, from which weapons and which traits uh, um, a player chooses. So it's obvious that in Overplug uh, you have characters with uh, more traits uh, uh, create for fight a monster. Mm-hmm. So in Overplug, you have these big, huge alien monsters, and so you have also the big, huge weapon to, to fight. And um, um, I add that. Um, sorry. Uh, in addition to the monster, there will be also the secondary horror, so the the monster's minion. Uh, so in that way, you can uh, you can do a lot of more fight. Uh, the, which must not be. Um, sorry, that <laughs> uh, not have to be against the main monster only. Yeah. So, thanks to the weapon, thanks to the secondary order, you can uh, you can build a session full of fight. Because mm-hmm. one one that uh, one particular angle that was in the back of my mind is I'm, remi- I'm reminded of Hunter the Vigil or or its predecessor Hunter the Reckoning in within the world of Dar- within the world of darkness series that is more about humans tr- humans trying to fight back against monsters yeah. Oh yeah, that one. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that—that's the reason why I'd I'd ask about that whole com- that whole combative thing. And in that in that same in that same vein, when it come, one thing that I noticed when it came to traits is that 
it seems that there that depending on stress level there are certain traits that are going to be active and with it is that is that something that you have that um if you were doing custom character creation that's something that would have to be chosen or are there certain traits that are baked in to be only accessible at certain stress levels Oh yeah, there are both of them. Um, some traits you can choose uh, always. Some traits you can choose only when you when you are in fear states or in calm uh, states uh, status. Mm -hmm. And um, so yes, uh, maybe a character is more powerful when he's in fear. So maybe he got a trait that can unlock only in fear status that. Uh, uh, that allow him to be more powerful with uh, his weapon, just to to. <clears throat> yeah, it's it's also a, 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 one thing one thing that we had hadn't mentioned that you, you actually have three three sets of stats each character. So one for the uh, calm state, one for the fear state, one for the shock state, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, you know. Uh, when you know when you switch from calm to fear, you have two traits that go that become lower and two that actually become higher, and you chose the, those ones. So basically, to represent how your character reacts to fear, uh, you know, you he is one uh, is he one of those people that have like an adrenaline rush and become stronger, mm -hmm. or you know, does he become laser like focused? So he actually becomes you know smarter when he's scared. Uh, you can decide that. And uh, based on that, again, you can decide. Uh, you have two traits that you can use when you're calm, and two traits that you can use when you are scared. And you know, by combining these, uh, you, as Simone was saying, you can choose. You know, is my character a stronger fighter when he's, uh, you know, when he's calm, calm, or when he's scared? Uh, is he more focused when he's calm or when he's scared? You know, you basically you decide. How does my character react to fear? You know, how does he cope with stress levels? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> now, with that with that in mind, you meant you mentioned you mentioned weapons and the like, and I'm guessing that's something that people would have to find uh, find in the air in the area, like on on the map and so on. Some weapons that char the character can choose uh, when he builds the. Um, some player can choose when he builds the character, and some other weapon you can find when explore uh, when explore the main set. Um, not only weapon, but also um, medicines, also first aid kit, uh, also more powerful object like uh, uh, trinkets. Uh, uh, amulets, uh, maps uh, to discover some places of the mindset, uh, so you can you can run for search all of these kind of objects. Mm -hmm. Now, with that in with with that in mind, I I was I had browsed through the monster list that each of the box that each of the boxes have. Um, since we meant since we talked about custom creation with uh, monsters, I'm guessing that each of those each of the five monsters that's within each each set is going to be an archetype. Yeah, yeah, basically yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's an example, you know, and uh, you can use it, but you also can use just as a guideline to do for if you want to make your own. And something I'm cu given given um given that we given that we mentioned Army of Darkness I know I I know I brought this up before but I but I want to delve a little bit further like Arm Army of Darkness some of the with has that whole thing in the third act of going against a literal army of the undead so I'm cur I'm curious if the if within encounters with VHS if there are going to be if there's the possibility for more Mook ascent mook equivalent encounters that not every encounter has to revolve around the monster. Okay, so uh, we have not yet prepared anything 
to manage uh, the Hordes, uh, but hope to do so later with the uh, expansion in the future, because one of uh, one of my objectives was to create a VHS uh, inspired by zombie movies, mm. and uh, with a horde of zombies, or in this case, horde of stupid skeletons. And uh, so uh, for that, uh, we are going to spend uh, a manual apart uh, to... To manage the horde. Mm -hmm. Now, with th with that in mind, would it, am I correct in assuming that each rule, the rulebook for all three sets, is going to be about a hundred or so pages? Yeah, uh, hundred and thirty. Hundred, hundred and thirty plus or less. Mm -hmm. And the result. As I recall, there was also the addition of um, cutscene, and is cutscene um, stuff that ju stuff that just couldn't fit into the other three books? Uh, yeah, uh, cutscene includes uh, some other films. So every manual um, will have uh, eight pre-made uh, movies, the uh, film session. Mm -hmm. uh, we want uh, to uh, um, to name it. And uh, cutscene includes uh, some other pre-made monsters, uh, some other pre-made uh, films, uh, some other pre-made uh, lists of traits to build other kinds of monsters. So all of these uh, cutscene stretch goal will be included in uh, in the single manual. Mm -hmm. Now, because of the because of the setup that could be argued as very board game equivalent. Um, I think something that needs to be addressed is how is how you'd handle and, and or support play uh, play of um, VHS on virtual tabletop. Yeah. So what are your plans yes. on that front? Uh, okay, so if you have, if you have downloaded the, the quick start, uh, you can see by yourself that is uh, uh, maps, tokens, uh, and um, and tests. Uh, uh, that you can put on roll twenty mm -hmm. uh, with a, a guideline to um, uh, to implement, and uh, for the we this is not wrote on the Kickstarter page, but um, for the future we plan uh, to um, to make sure that you 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 can go to play with VHS also on other uh, virtual board game. Uh, um, uh, other than Roll20. Yeah. Other platforms. Yeah, like mm -hmm. Fantasy Ground, for example. But we have not uh, right because we are not sure about it. But for sure, you can play it through Roll20. All right. All right. And with and taking all that into account, what are you guys shooting for as far as a release window? Not a date per se, but a, but a window. Yeah, uh, we are going. We plan to publish and um, and doing the expedition on December of this year, uh, naturally. Uh, December, January, two thousand and twenty-three. Mm -hmm. right. And I'll I'll certainly be looking forward to seeing how it de how it develops. But with all with all that said. I would like to sincerely thank both of you for taking the time out of your schedule to come all the way up to my temple and enjoy the madness at play here. No problem. It, it was fun. Thank yeah. you. And yeah. anytime you guys see fit to return, the door is always open. As I often say around here, drinking is not mandatory, but it is encouraged. <laughs> <laughs> thank you Good so to much. Know. <laughs> thank you. And of and of course, a sincere thanks goes out to everyone who took the time out of their schedule to come onto the show and enjoy the madness. And there will be plenty more where that came from, as there always is here on the open bar of the internet. But until then, on behalf of the good brothers present and not present, my name is Mildra, I am your gaming monk, stay fucking frosty everybody! <laughs>